Good afternoon. Hope you had a great lunch session. I really enjoyed the chocolate uh, brownie at the end. It was pretty fun. I wanted to take another one. Uh, we are here to talk about open banking, but uh, from a global perspective. So I'm very, very excited about this session. I think if, if there is anything to learn, we also learn from outside perspectives. So uh, we brought with us some uh, ladies and gentlemen that will tell, talk to, to us about their experiences in open banking, how it went in their markets, and uh, they will hopefully share with us some, some key lessons learned. Uh, so we will start with, uh, we'll start this session with uh, CBI. CBI is a financial services company providing services for uh, over 400 banks and financial institutions in Italy. And uh, to present the case of uh, open banking in Italy, the, the, the joys and, and the painfulness of that, we have Alessio Dele Nocci and... Uh, Sorry, no, did I say Alessio? No, I have, we have, sorry, we have Dario Della Noce and Alessio uh, who are going to speak about that today. So, warm welcome for our gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ismail. Good afternoon, all, and thanks to Ismail, Luca, and other colleagues for this great opportunity to be here presenting you CBI Globe and other CBI services. My name is uh, Alessio uh, Castelli. I work for CBI uh, in the Business Operation Office. Um, with me, Dario Delle Noci from Standard and Network Department. Uh, what about uh, CBI? CBI is a public limited company uh, which is completely held by uh, more than 400 uh, financial institutions. And uh, CBI aims to bring innovation within the banking industry and the payment market uh, together with all the financial institutions involved in these markets. Uh, during uh, uh, more than 25 years of history, we, uh, we launched different kinds of services within the payment industry, uh, mostly focused uh, in Italy. Uh, 25 years ago, uh, we launched our Open Banking 1.0 service, mainly focused and dedicated to corporates. This is the uh, CBI, that is a, a corporate interbanking system, which allow companies, corporates, and small and medium enterprises to uh, facilitate their cash and treasury management uh, through a single account. So it's a sort of open banking but uh, it was born 25 years ago uh, in Italy. During the years, uh, CBI uh, exchanged its uh, customer targets. Um, in 2018, we launched some central apps uh, dedicated to the interconnection among financial institutions and central public administration. In 2014, we launched uh, C-Bill, which is an e-billing service uh, allowing corporates uh, and retails to visualize and to pay online bills that have been issued by uh, the billers onboarded on the solution. In 2017, we launched different kinds of services uh, like Mutuitel, uh, which is a service involved in the mortgages uh, market and big data CBI, which allow companies to enhance their predictive analysis in order to have a, a better uh, understanding of their business, of their uh, products. In 2018, we launched CBA Globe, which is a service mainly focused on PST2 and open banking. Why CBI is so important within the Italian market, within the Italian payment industry? Uh, CBI, thanks to its co constituency, has been committed by its community, uh, composed of more than 400 financial institutions, to uh, be proactive, to participate within uh, different kinds of uh, international working groups. Here, within this chart, you can see some of these working groups, like uh, the ISO or the UNC FACT or the European Payment Council, where we try, where we define together with other uh, international committees and with other 
uh, international organization different kinds of framework of uh, workflows of implementational guidelines which could be uh, utilized on some financial services. What about the current scenario in the payment industry? We know that there are three main forces which are shaping today the, the scenario, the, the payment market. These forces are globalization, regulation, and digitalization. But we know also that the uh, well-established banks have today core assets, like, for instance, trust, know-how, and a huge expertise in managing different kinds of services uh, toward both corporate and retail customers. So there is still a huge gap among challenger banks and incumbent banks and well-established banks, and this lack could be only lost by well-established banks. Established banks have to uh, make investments, have to change their views in order to be more competitive within this market. Market that is shaped by these three forces, globali globalization, sorry, regulation, and digitalization. Open banking is not a local or a domestic uh, flow, business flow. As Ismail stated uh, before in this morning, open banking is uh, a, a global new paradigm within banking and within finance. Here you have some example of open banking across the world. In Europe, or within the pan-European uh, society, we have the PST2 uh, that squeezes our uh, brains in order to be uh, more open uh, toward open banking. We have some example in USA, we have some sample in Asia, we have some sample in Australia. Uh, 10 days ago, South Korea uh, has launched its open banking program. So open banking is a, a global new paradigm, paradigm for finance and banking. What we experienced during our history, during our uh, mission within open banking is a lack of standard in the API connection, a lack of cooperation between players, among all the players involved within the market, third parties, uh, traditional banks, fintechs, IT provider, all the actors. And this causes a fragmentation in the world payment sector. This is the reason why in 2017, CBI has launched CBI Globe products, CBI Globe services. In 2017, our constituency has to, uh, CBI has cast to implement different kinds of uh, new initiatives in order to reduce fragmentation across the uh, Italian market, across the European payment market. Within this scenario, CBI has defined some implementational guidelines that are open to all the actors who want to have business with uh, the Italian banks and the Italian financial institutions. After that, CBI has developed CBI Globe, which is uh, an open API gateway which aims to facilitate the interconnection among fintechs, third parties, traditional banks. All the participants can make uh, their relationship, their uh, business interaction with all the banks, and CBI is not involved within the competitive area uh, that is related to each participant. We are just a uh, technological enabler for open banking in Italy and for open banking across all Europe. The solution uh, has already been adopted by 300 banks in Italy, representing the 80% of the total uh, Italian uh, banking market share. And more than 80 third parties uh, are having their business with this solution. Later, Dario will show you uh, some figure figures about uh, these numbers. Uh, what about the solution? CBA Globe is a two-side solution. We have a southern side of the solution, uh, which is 
related to the accounting service in payment service provider uh, activities. So we uh, facilitate the interconnection among traditional banks and third parties in order to have an easier way to expose their APIs to all the third parties involved within the PST2 uh, depicted markets. So we have a solution that is completely defined, designed and developed on common implementational guidelines on some technical specification issued by the Berlin group and with different kind of modules which have been uh, developed on top of the solution. We have mainly two different kinds of modules on the solution, functional layers and security layers. Uh, for instance, uh, I can tell you about uh, some modules dedicated to the uh, strong customer authentication orchestration or to the third parties recognition and identification. But the solution is able also to centralize on a platform other services like for instance, an help desk support that is available 24 seven uh, to third parties and uh, to traditional banks, or again, a solution to uh, detect fraud and spread alert to all the other uh, actors involved within transactions or within uh, the solution. The solution is uh, also equipped uh, with uh, a sandbox for a testing, uh, that is a testing facility for developers and actors involved in having some testing activities on the solution. And we centralize also all the activities related to the API versioning and to the API management. From another perspective, instead, we have a TPP enabler. So till now, I uh, explained you what we are doing with the accounting service, payment service provider, with the traditional banks who uh, has to expose their APIs to third parties, but uh, a traditional bank would be also interested in having some business uh, uh, playing an active role as third party. So in this way, we are now uh, implementing the TPP enabler, which is the northern side of this uh, uh, solution. The TPP enabler intends to facilitate the interconnection among third parties and uh, traditional banks. Uh, how? Simply connecting and giving to the third parties just one interface to uh, connect, to reach all the endpoints to which these third parties are interested for having some business. Some advantages of our uh, solution. I already stated that 80% of the Italian banking sector has adopted this, uh, this solution. We are a single point of access for third parties interested in having business, in having API calls with our uh, platform. Uh, we uh, develop our solution on single uh, implementational guidelines, so third parties interested uh, in having some business with us and with our banks should adopt just one technical specification to reach 300 banks, and we have a common ecosystem that is open to all the actors uh, involved within this, uh, this scenario. Uh, we have to develop an ecosystem in Italy because for us it's very important to uh, have a collaborative approach involving all the actors interested in having this kind of business. So uh, the open bank project, the traditional banks, the challenger banks, third parties, fintech. Fintechs are, most imp are more important in our vision because uh, fintechs are able to uh, define and to offer uh, some services more addressed to customer needs. Should they be retail customers or corporate customers? Uh, so for us, it's very important to create an ecosystem because uh, fintechs and fintechs API uh, could be uh, easily integrated within our solution and, and utilized by our constituency, by our banks, in order to uh, give, to offer new innovative services to our uh, clients. 
These are, this is a map uh, giving us uh, a site of uh, the region from which we are receiving API calls from our uh, third parties to our, uh, from the third parties, sorry, to our uh, platform. We reach something like uh, 120,000 uh, account information uh, calls in two months. The service has gone live since the 1st of June, but we uh, are reaching API codes uh, from September with uh, about 1% of payment initiation API goals. Now I leave the floor to Dario for a zoom on the TPP enabler and an evolution of CBI Group. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Alessio. Thank you, Ismail, for the introduction. Yeah, um, this slide is very interesting because uh, it's early to say, but uh, the exponential path is coming to uh, take form. Uh, you know API are uh, on uh, web, on the web, and the web is uh, um, characterized by uh, exponential impact on, uh, on their services. Uh, another thing that I would like to, to point out is, uh, uh, as Alessio said, the number of uh, API call, uh, calls. Um, again, it's early to say, but uh, uh, it seems that uh, uh, customer uh, rely on third party, especially for the financial awareness. So when I need to have an aggregation of the accounts um, and when I need uh, to have awareness uh, of my data, of my financial data, uh, maybe uh, I feel more comfortable to use uh, a third party. Uh, while uh, when I need to move money from one uh, banking account to another, uh, maybe I still uh, trust in uh, traditional banks. Uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, this is uh, uh, the current situation, but just as I said, things could change exponentially and uh, uh, things could, uh, could be different in the uh, next month. This is a, uh, a slide that, show, uh, that shows some of our uh, main uh, uh, bank's client. Uh, uh, it's not advertising. Uh, I would like to, uh, to stress that uh, all of that are uh, our clients, but uh, um, they are not only clients for us because, uh, and maybe this is our strength, uh, because we built our solution together with them. So uh, why uh, 300 banks uh, um, have chosen CBI? Um, the answer for us is simply uh, because we involved them from the beginning. Um, we launched, like, like Alessio said before, uh, an open banking service uh, uh, 25 years ago without no regulation push. <laughs> uh, we made it uh, alone um, as a collaborative environment. Uh, so uh, we involved them from the beginning. Uh, we brought expertise uh, to the table of uh, the open banking in Italy and uh, um, we share uh, all the expertise of the banks um, in a sharing idea, um, in a sharing idea uh, business model, I can say. And uh, uh, because we think that uh, with the cross functionalities and uh, uh, with the expertise from different sector, uh, it's easier to build uh, a platform, uh, a service uh, that can uh, um, likely um, meet the, um, the, the, the customer needs, of course. And this is the, the, the statements, the, the wall statements of some of our uh, clients. Uh, uh, you, you can say that they talk about uh, collaboration, they talk about uh, synergy, they, op they talk about openness. Um, so for us, it's very important uh, because, uh, uh, like I said, collaboration uh, is a foundation for, uh, for innovation from our perspective. Uh, but uh, uh, go back to the platform. Uh, as uh, Alessio said, we, uh, we give to uh, our uh, clients uh, a foundation, a building blocks 
where they can, uh, can build uh, complementary services. Uh, they can build complementary services with fintechs because uh, uh, we know that the PST2 has unbundled the financial value chain and the payment value chain. And maybe from our perspective, uh, we need to rebuild the, the financial value chain and the payment value chain. Of course, the value chain will be more flexible, will be more liquid, but we need to rebuild it. And how we can do it? Uh, we need to find a new complementary uh, with, uh, among fintechs and, uh, uh, and banks. So for this reason, we launched the TPP enabler. The TPP enabler uh, allow uh, third parties and also banks that would like to act like third parties to rely on a single interface because we know that CBA Globe um, uh, make reachable 300 banks but we know that there are other hundreds of banks all around uh, uh, Europe. So we introduced a software uh, layer and new modules that act like uh, um, a standard. And again, uh, through this uh, software module, uh, is it possible to move the complexity from the right side, from the bank side, and from the TPP side to uh, a centralized hub? So we, we try to uh, facilitate the dialogue, technologically speaking, uh, between uh, third party and uh, at banks. Uh, this slide shows some, some example of uh, modules that can be shared uh, among all the actors. Uh, for example, the strong customer authentication orchestrator, uh, the sandbox, uh, also the engine to, to aggregate account and to initialize payment. But what uh, I would like to stress is that uh, we are a um, collaborative solution. So on top, banks that can build their own strategy, can build uh, their own uh, business model. In our view, our platform could be used uh, uh, like a two-sided platform because of course we are in a two-sided market. From one side we have the uh, ASPSP, the banking uh, system that open up the, uh, the, the customer account on the basis of uh, a consent to third parties. But why not to think also to the reciprocity, to the vice versa, from TPPs to the banks? Uh, because uh, maybe uh, with platform and with uh, uh, open data, we really can give uh, a renewed customer journey to, to, um, to the customer. Why am I saying that? Because if we think about uh, uh, a complex goal for, uh, for a user, uh, usually uh, a consumer, a retail, a corporate for a complex goal need to have uh, several relationship. Maybe uh, the customers need to buy several products just to reach a goal. What we can do with the uh, platform and uh, with the open data economy? We can give the opportunity to players to collaborate and to give uh, an aggregation, an, a, a, an app that allow to the customer to reach the goal simply uh, asking to uh, a, a unique user interfaces. Uh, so we could have uh, a cheaper services, a cheaper service in uh, um, a frictionless uh, uh, way. Uh, we can make an example. If we think, uh, for example, to the traditional way uh, we trade for an house, uh, we know uh, that uh, there are at least three steps uh, step traditionally. Um, we, uh, we scout <laughs> for, uh, for an apartment, we scout for a particular area, then uh, we um, uh, investigate the possibility to have a mortgage of, or if you need uh, uh, for example, an insurance. And then there are uh, banks and notary um, issue steps. So uh, those steps are all separated and uh, don't talk each other. So you need to be uh, an expert in all these steps. Uh, you need to be an, an expert in real estate, you need to be an expert in mortgage, and you need to be an expert in banking and notary. And uh, the, um, the choice that you make in one of that step uh, will influence the other choice in the other steps. Uh, it could be and the other step could be influenced positively or negatively from the other step. What is our vision? That uh, those three steps could uh, uh, collapse uh, in one single point. And uh, how we can 
do it. Uh, just uh, Alessio and me said uh, through uh, a single point of access, through a platform, through uh, a renewed data economy. And of course, uh, through uh, uh, the, a changing of the culture. Uh, it's, it's the things that we are trying to do uh, from the bottom and uh, with the dialogue between, uh, um, between fintechs and banks uh, that technically could happen also with API and uh, with API days like this one. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Dario Alessio. We have time for one question. Is there any question in the audience? So maybe, yeah, we have a question over there. Hi, thanks for the presentation. Uh, one you. quick question. So with introduction of these additional layers between the end customer and the ASPSP, how does consent work? Isn't it like too complicated for the customer to understand where my, what have I given my consent for? Whom have I given it and where is it going? Yeah, Mario. Right. Yeah, um, PST2 introduced the, the concept of uh, consent, uh, of course. And um, within the open banking, the consent uh, uh, is managed uh, between, uh, among the, the players, the consumer, the, the TPP, uh, and the banks, of course. But uh, the concept is that uh, the data is owned by uh, the users. So we know that uh, for the open data, uh, there are uh, some regulatory uh, issues. And uh, we know that uh, the debate is, uh, is open. Uh, but behind all that, uh, we, we have built a platform that can manage uh, technically uh, all the choices that will be, um, that will be uh, done uh, from a regulatory. Uh, so uh, the important things for us is to believe that the open data economy is possible, uh, is to be ready to support our clients to be there uh, when regulatory um, give the possibility uh, to use those, uh, those data. Just we, like, just we did uh, 25 years ago when we launched our open banking service for corporates. It was a community open banking, so we had our legal framework. I don't, I don't exclude that we can do the same thing. We can build uh, a legal framework among the actors, of course, uh, it's, it's okay, uh, we can write the rules among our community. Uh, and this allow us, give us the possibility to be ready when regulators uh, will give the, um, the possibility to open data economy. Yeah. I hope uh, I answer your question. Okay. Thank you very much, thanks Dario, thanks Thank Alessio. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, yes, please. Thank you very much.